Welcome, speed gaming fans, to the Final Fantasy Randomizer Winter Tournament 2024 Round 1 race between Iker and F. Coughlin. My name is Davian Hawk. With me today is Sophnum with our tracker. Uh, I saw. Uh, sorry, Scarcer. Ah, we got a bit of a late chart going on this. My apologies. Yeah, but this is going to be a great race. Uh, both of our runners here, no stranger to the randomizer scene, um, kind of in general. Well, let's take a look at the blursings while we have time for the runners to get started. Uh, fighter gets plus 20 strength, plus 25 agility. Kind of great. Uh, Thief, even greater with that plus legendary sword and elemental magic. That's a sweeper and big stick pre-promotion. Black belt, if we see anyone take it. Promo fighter armor and plus 20 hit. That plus 20 hit's kind of nice, but I wouldn't take a black yeah. belt, honestly, with the Thief and the fighter the way they are. Uh, Red Mage, plus Cure 3 and protection from life, poison, and elemental. I think that's what E stands for. I can never remember. Uh, plus Heal Magic and Hurt Undead for the White Mage. And then plus Hurt Dragon and Equip Shield and or Helmet and Gauntlet for the Black Mage. Yeah, some, uh, some great uh, choices here. Looks like... On stream, uh, Iker's chosen to go Thief, Fighter, White, Black, a very, very classic uh, party composition the, there. The vanilla of the vanilla. Yep. And I don't um, blame him. <laughs> no, there's... Uh... There's a lot of good with the party that he's chosen, and any any downsides he could see with the others compared to the good sides. Mainly just having access to all the possible magic. We've seen a lot of times where the red mage looks amazing, but it just doesn't pan out. Yep. And let's check here. Expect Fred to flip over here any moment. We can see what his start's going to look like. I think I would be tempted to go Thief Red Black on this with these blursings. I like, I like your thinking, because that Thief being able to swing a legendary sword, the value of like an Excal or Masa rolled up with a Thief or a Ninja is just, it's real. But man, that plus 20 strength makes that fighter hard to pass up. Yeah, it does. Um... Yeah, I just like the plus legendary sword. That is that is really good for um, our runners today. For any of our runner or viewers joining us after Danny's race with Loopy DV just a few moments ago, uh, who's hoping that we get to see as much chaos as we did in that race? I don't know if you caught that. I wasn't, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't, I wasn't quite able to catch that one before, but, um, let's go ahead and, and give some of our viewers a rundown of what the Winter Tournament is, um, or at least the, what flag set we're running today. Um, today is Shard Hunt, so instead of trying to light the four orbs where we know where they are, they've been shattered into orblets or whatever. They'll be renamed this seed, and you have to collect 28 of them to get past the orb where Garland, behind where Garland is and reach the end of time. The Temple of Fiends are visited. Shard Hunt with Oops All Loose, with the few turn in incentives, things like the Crystal, the Herb, TNT, Adamant, those are incentive items specifically the excal vorpal power bonk opal bracelet and or, or, ruse stick yeah and our tracker tonight pointing out that and a e, ribbon yeah that e is earth elemental resistance um but yeah looks like we live witness seth coughlin loading up the ROM. 
yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get some. One interesting thing with the Final Fantasy Randomizer, normally it would, or we would have scaling for the level experience and gold gained from fights based off of incentive items collected. But with this Shard Hunt flag set, it's based off of shards gained. So if you've got all the shards you need, you are going to be gaining far more experience with a with that grind later than you would an early grind. Sometimes the early grind makes sense, but who knows? We shall see. Yeah, it kind of depends. Um, there's a lot in these seeds between, you know, which direction you go out of generally Provoca, um, if you have the option. So it's uh it's quite interesting to see kind of how the fight how the fight selection in the dungeons can truly affect that much. And we're going Thief Fighter Nun Red. Okay. That is an interesting choice, but I, I can't say I don't like it. I am very much partial to the Thief Red Mage 2 man, so. Yeah, I mean that cure three is gonna get them through a decent amount. And I get I mean the blur things on the other mages aren't really to write home about, but I'm always afraid of key spells landing outside of the red mages um purview. Yeah, when you see things like Life 2 and Cure 4 exit just happen beyond the alternating spells at level 3 that you just can't learn. Yeah, for sure. So... Clock coming down, we are about to see the gates dropped. Yep, absolutely. Let us begin. Interesting. Ikor going straight towards uh, Toph. I think he's just going to rely on the elemental map. No, he's going to dwarves. This makes more sense. Bade level one. Not red learnable. Does he reload? Well, he gets fast. Fast is learnable as is temper. So not having fade, not having cure for... But having temper and fast, I, I can see that. Keeping that. Yeah, and, and we've got cure three, so. Um. Ooh, and Iker is rewarded with the herb. Looks like he did the save and walk strat so he could get there and see, but he is going into Toph without purchasing any magic or gear in Canaria. Interesting choice, but hey, you've got free elemental magic, so you might as well use it. I guess if you're doing a gambit like that, ooh, that's really nice. Access to the inner sea is uh, established here for Ikear at least, and soon to be Fred. Plus getting that Weir Sword, finally giving him something to actually swing with that fighter, this is totally doable. If Garland doesn't have anything crazy. Just hard punch and white mages, which is just really a time-honored tradition. Yeah, just taking on his old subordinate Lich 2's hatred for them. Go save. And we are raided by the people coming off of Loopy DB's channel yeah, from that fire Danny, fire. or sorry. Fizzlebeef's channel after that Danny v. Loopy DV fight. Yeah, You're just getting here in time to see Fred Coughlin and Ikor take out Garland. We got the ship in, in tow. We just got the Jeez, canal from the king. Wow. That's an opener. Oh, and we're getting a little bit of crosstalk from Fred's audio. So... Um, it sounds like it's not clean today. But that ship, that canal... Um, I probably shouldn't even want to go up here. Quite a bit. I want to go for Voka for level twos. Very, very true. Let's see what's in here. Pure potion. Shard. Come back later. You 
picking up some Comper Bonks just for some armor in, uh, for Icor. Meanwhile, Coughlin, our first runner to actually get to the pirates for Picky. Yep. Well, looks like we're going to fire three of the pirates, which is a really good plan. Um, looks like the Red Mage is not very fast, which, at least this turn order. Hey, you've got mass immolation of pirates. It, it's the job. Doesn't matter how long it takes as long as the other racers are up. And that's exit and harm two. Harm two is probably takeable, honestly, because we have the harm all flag. That is a sweeper for that white mage that can be used instead of those level one charges that have fade. Yeah, that's a really great point. Um, it's always good to have something on every spell level in the first few slots just to cast. Um, even if it's not going to be a top spell. Oh, Invis 2 was also there. That is really good to see. If you don't find that white shirt, having the ability to stack some invasion on your entire party can be a little more valuable than just rusing up. And Nuke, also learnable. Level 2, this is... There goes the need for that fade at level 1 for F. Coughlin. Yeah, this is definitely uh, turning out to be a magic rich seed. And, um, level 2 Nuke will do both of our runners quite well here. Um, but Fred getting out of Provoca first. Uh, heading to Elfland to shop. This is some pretty important stores to see, especially with the Black Magic, and or at level 3 and 4, the uh, Ninja, when promoted, can use those spells. Up to level 3 for the Red- er, for the Knight. Fred not really bothering to check anything else other than that first spell, or Magic Shop, before going straight to Marsh. Yep. Hiker checks Matoya, doesn't really find that much of note, um, and we'll continue back south. Money is value, and a shard is nice, but not really an incentive item that could lead him to where to go next. Yep, so we do Fade a Nightmare for a few levels here, which is always a great idea. I like to see runners doing a little bit of a walking grind, even if it's not super efficient. In the early game, those few fights that are worth only four or five hundred experience are enough to get you those few levels that up your early game charges of magic, and that allows you to scale up against bigger enemies. Yeah, and your survivability goes up just exponentially with the first few levels you can get. So I could grabbing that herb he did not already know about. That is one check you'll be able to get while he's an Elflin that uh, F. Coughlin did it. If that's something nice like a early tail uh, with the canal and the ship, that's promotion on the table. Yeah, that's actually uh, probably the best thing to see here. Um, but you do have that thief with um, legendary weapons. That wasn't promo locked. And so if it's an x gal you can sleep, swing it immediately. Very true, or just a rolled up Vorpal. Yeah, that's always nice in the Thief's hands. It's a Katana Light. Oh, and a Ribbon. We'll take a Ribbon. Ribbons are great. The Mick Rib. Best armor in the game. Yeah, absolutely. And it rolled plus three this time, which I think is worth like two M death or something. It's not very much. But that's not why we love it, so. Absorbing the power that could cause immediate death rather than the damage that- Hey, life 2, cure 3, heal 3, that is a stacked level 3 white magic. Yeah, I th think that first slot in 3 is red learnable, too. So it means Fred will have access to life 2, which is... One of, one of the things that you really want to see before you try and get into the past in Temple of Fiends. Yeah. Lamp at level 4 white, and then we saw Quake and Saber at level 4 black. That Saber might actually be pretty valuable, especially for F. Coughlin, because the black ni or the ninja could use that to self-power itself while the power bunk gets put on the warrior. Meanwhile, Oxiel in the incentive chest, that's just randomly there. That's not normally 
place for oops all loose I and B, but uh, there you go, incentive item out of the incentive chest. And of course, with the northern docks equipped, we have a dock at Cardia Isles for Bahamut, we have a dock at Onrek, and at the desert to go to Mirage, so that Oxyale does lead into a lot of checks, although in a pretty high-level dungeon. Yeah, um, you can always try and, and run through the middle of the room and, and do Mermaid Side, at least, if you're looking to try and get some more shards, high-level gear, you know, just more looks at something. Yeah, the big thing here is the only places left for those runners to go would be Crescent to check the sages in the store, and then first two levels, of, or first three levels of Earth. So, C might sound tempting, because Earth is Earth. Yeah. I was actually kind of surprised that neither of our runners took the Gambit and, and skipped Marsh. Um, since the access was there. Um, obviously, we know there's, uh, there's good stuff to be had down here at Marsh, so it's a good play, but... Very interesting. Seeing those very expensive, nearly four grand houses, this is not a uh, great seed for charge ca or charge rehabilitation, but if you can ferret those out, deal with grinds later, it's not much of an issue. Gonna see if Coughlin check here, get the herb, and have to go back to Elfland, but uh, hey, after this, he's right out the inner sea. Frost wolves, how beautiful is that? The, the wolves have frost. Not the frost wolves, though. They probably don't at this point. Well, I mean, anyone who watched Danny and Luffy's race saw frost wolves with Brack. That's... That, that's gross. Why would you do that? Because Danny needed to have a seed almost as bad as the seed she rolls to have a challenge. I suppose. I mean, she already rolled a seed for a race earlier today, where we had four racers on stream at once. Nice little injection of experience. That's Those are kind of nice early. Um, they don't mean very much after the first few levels. But... Hey, if they would scale up a little more for later chests, it'd be nice, but they're not meant to make the game easier. They're just meant to give something that's actually substance. Yeah, get rid of garbage items stuff. You don't want more pure pots. Hep Goplin goes out, almost makes it to the er, to the dock, and then realizes, wait, I got a herb. Yep. Gonna go get his herb, and we'll be happy for it. Then as he does that, Ikor has exited out as everything in Marsh and is on his way to get in the ship and head out to the Outer Sea himself. Yeah. And... Um, let's see where Ikea decides to go next. It's gonna be pretty open for them. Oh, and the Gerwolves have Cure! These wolves are just trolls! Dangerous, dangerous trolls. Yes, Frost, nuke Frost them. And cure, nuke them. That's a, that's a really good solution to that problem, I must say. And just like that, our relative placements for our runners are basically the same. Oh, no, looks like Iker is going back to Canaria to check the shop and look at restocking some supplies. He has plenty of money. Well, a lot of money. Plenty is a bit much to say. And F. Coplin going straight to Earth. Yeah, with those 4K houses, um, and you really do need the houses as heavily as he's relying on magic. Of Coughlin, gonna give us our first peek at ooh, unrunnable bulls. Well, ain't that just a cannibal? Yeah, but um, probably, probably saying something about bull monkey over on Fred's stream. He's just looking at some prairie oysters and going no. Yep, resets out of that wing of Earth. Um. Pauses and maybe checking to see what, what 
he, he's got or looking for. That's a, that's a good amount of gold. I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't reset now that he got that amount of gold, but if there's nothing in these two boxes, saving the steps and just getting right back out is totally feasible. And there's our bigger divergence, Icor going to Crescent. Yeah, not a really a bad plan. Check freebies. Um, it's always a good idea. That's Ooh. huge. Yeah, bread finding the key. Can't reset out of that one. Gotta exit. Half of me thinks he could just exit out and just go and get all the key chests because there's a lot of gear he could get, but he's taking the proximity. He's gonna just keep going down to Vulcan or down. He has exit as we saw. So even if he has to bounce off the plate without the rod, he doesn't have to run it back out. And there's the rod. Oh, so Iker actually is taking the route that most optimally does Earth. Yeah, so that'll probably drive Iker to Earth. It's a good check, though. Um, probably will save time overall, depending on how essential sort of this stuff pass glitch is. usually expect to find the ruby or one or two other things this early on. I could see the lich's armory being stocked with stuff. The way the flags are set up, the incentive items shouldn't be all together, but in the early game they should be more or less linear, the most logical places you would go to get more progression. But that's by it should be, it, it definitely isn't always the case. Yeah, the randomizer has a tough job, and sort of asking it to do this nebulous, make it fun, is <laughs> like... Oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. he took, he reset Oops. out, he did not want to take that. For anyone who does not know, that box with the X is a one-of-a-kind box in the map. It has a unrunnable encounter with Warmech for the value of a masa. We don't know what the masa is. It could be a masa minus or vanilla, or it could be a masa plus five, but you have to fight Warmech to get it. Yep. If your inventory is full, you can see what it is. You can peek. Um, friend doing a job not opening the box a second time, although I don't blame him. That is an automatic motion right there. Check the closet over here, just find some more sleeping quarters. Now unfortunately, being where it's at, re-diving Earth 2 just to get that Masa, it's a fairly short run, all things considered, but I wouldn't think it'd be something he's going to come back to. He probably wants to take a grind elsewhere past promotion. Yeah. Unless he and... finds some no-good swords. And, and we do see Iker picking up the, his key, so... Um, I, I don't know how you would do Earth and miss miss the key that's in that box, but you can. And looks like some ass packs were unrunnable as well. Interesting. Ikor is taking option B, is gonna go and use that key on all the different key checks. The inner sea is stocked full of potential gear and cash and incentive items that he is not going to have to take encounters to get to. Well, two encounters in Toph, at least. Yeah, but there's there's a lot of... And those encounters are, are randomly... Sh oh no, they're set, so I don't think they're going to be very hard. That was an amazing pickup there of Coughlin finding the defense sword plus four. Five. Yeah, it requires promotion to wield as a weapon, but that is a valid endgame option for that knight. Plus, it's a roost stick in weapon form. Yeah, and it, the thief will not be able to use it, so that knight is the perfect uh, perfect receptacle for that. Hakor finds nothing in the Canaria treasury, gonna go up towards Topher it looks like. Meanwhile, Icor, F. Coughlin coming out is going back to the inner sea to do his chest checks as well. Of course, we know that the rod is with the sages, so he will not be going back to Earth anytime soon. Yeah, and I kind of wonder if Iker will, honestly. 
Um, obviously, if the loot's down there, we're coming down there at some point, but... Short of that, you know, we've got access to most everything. We got F. Coughlin checking out the Hooray Dwarf and just living with the Hoorays, not liberating him. Meanwhile, there's a ruby. That's a reason to go back to the Onrak continent. Or, Bellman continent, I should say. Yep. And Ice Armor plus six out of the top right TOF checks. That is excellent gear. Not only is it maximum armor that the knight or the fighter can yield or can use at the moment, but it is pretty much maximum armor that the ninja could use. Yeah. It's uh really nice here. So we're gonna we're gonna check the Mary Locks. We're gonna we're gonna be slightly disappointed. Now, would you check Marsh Locked? That now you're a bridge. Ooh. That's a that's a bit of a whammy. Ooh. It's a key item. It makes pretty sounds. Yeah, what? but oh god. Yeah, yeah, but we already have the boat, so it's completely useless. Yep, we don't need it. Um, but I was gonna mention that uh, one thing about opening boxes is that your shards kind of work as an experience multiplier. So the more shards you have, the more experience you earn from enemies. Yep, it is tied to the shard count, not the incentive items collection. Ooh, scorpions with poison touch. And also, Ikor going to marsh locked. Interesting to see this, but hey, this early, knowing what's already in marsh and having exit, I don't think it's a bad play. Um... Yeah, I, I don't know. It's a low percentage play. It it, it depends on what Ikir thinks. Maybe Ikir thinks that there was an optimal path to this. If you go to Earth first, maybe. Well, with the key being so early found, that means that the lock chest can be very much in logic for early progression items. I've seen many a race come down to who actually checked Marsh Locked. It's always fun when it happens. Oh, here's some arachnids that are unrunnable. All the unrunnables are in I think it's 14% unrunnables with these flags. It's a slightly increased. I don't ever remember if it's 14 or 16. Because um, I don't remember what base it was ever. So. But it Titan's is slightly tunnel. increased. Titan's Tunnel paying off cash for a couple. I'm going to see what Sarda has. If it's nothing, well... That's five, six checks taken care of. You put these covers here that are also a cobble. I guess what I meant is all the other ones were marsh, but... Ooh, not a shark. And that ruby check turned out to be some chump change and a potion. Oh, well that's super unfortunate. What did the old man have? A potion. A pure. A potion. Very nice. A pure potion, I should say, not a potion. A potion is an individual item. A pure is a different type of potion, specifically called a pure. Yes. Don't mind me, I'm just being stream pedantic for no good reason. Meanwhile, as uh, F. Coughlin takes care, takes on these gerwolves, the marsh lock turns out to be a shard and some nothing else. Ikor still has three more checks in Northwest Castle to pick up before he can move on and go. I'm assuming at this point, proximity, he's just going to go straight into Earth and full dive Earth. I don't think he'll go to sea. Yeah, it's an interesting question. He could probably do okay in sea. But do you really want to? Well, it looks like F. Goblin's heading that way, not just to go to see, but also probably to check the store here in Onrak. Yep. There's, there's a high chest at City. Hopefully there's some items over there. They've got to be here somewhere. Looks like Icor checked those three checks in Northwest Castle, found some gold and a vanilla fo a fire shield. Didn't think it was worth it for the walk and just reset out and, hey, creeps with poison! Ooh, gross. Them creeps are creepy in the worst way.
Derpede's doing bad things to have Colophon's party as he just now finally makes it into Onrak. Reasonably affordable potions across the board. The sauce being sub 200 is nice to see, but uh, he's going to go ahead and heal up in the worst inn in the game. Those prices are just absurd for the lack of view. <laughs> it looks very pretty, though. I, mean, I do like how, how dressed up the most expensive inn is with the various things. Yeah, picturesque, uh, picturesque wooded town on the coast with a nice dock and view out to the sea, but you're surrounded by so many trees there, you can't really see anything. Oh well, that's a Gershark shark in uh, in sea that's being taken by F. Coplin. Nuke comes out but doesn't kill either. Just a low roll across the board trying to cook him, still doesn't get the kill. Stinger, just to deal more of a pain. Uh, we can get through this Gershark. We just sort of fire through the Gershark. And it that worked! A, that was a chunky Gershark. I would not doubt seeing an exit cast sooner than later to get out and save those levels, but if he's focusing mermaid side first... Oh! There's more Gersharks. Friend did the, the little-known trick that, um... So in this game, it tells you you have found a heal potion. You actually probably found three or four of them. Um, it's just kind of how it works. Yep, uh, the randomizer added stacks of potions that can be in chests, and in fact, it has included the ability to overflow the stock 99, so you can actually have more than 99 potions if you pick up a good chunk of potions. Yep, it won't let you pick them up if you're at 99, though. You have to be at like 98. And then it'll it's add weird to that me. way. It's 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 a cool bug, but Fred had managed to do it. He had one A potions for a short period of time. Unrunnable seafood pack. That's just so scary. Just those scorpions having or lobsters having above 200 hit points. Switching to the boil strats loses the nin or the thief. That's uh, not so great for his experience on that key member of his party. Yeah, that was okay. But he has made it all the way to nine levels pre-fighting any fiends, and has life two on his red mage for the utility. Oh, and these girwolves. Are Interesting. Uh, F. Coughlin not checking any of the chests except for that one directly next to the mermaid or mermaid staircase. Doesn't want to risk excess encounters he can avoid on that floor and gets the floater. Canoe be found Ooh. and he will be happy. Canoe not be found and he will be bitter to find the floater this early. Yep. Oh, we decide we do not carbonate bubbles. Thumbs down in chat. I, I'm, I'm neutral on this whole thing, but it was a deliver effort because Bubbles isn't the way. Bubbles isn't always in the way. You just tell the runner that if they talk to him, they'll move out of the way. You don't I mean, have that's to tell true. them exactly how they disappear or what caused them to disappear, but hey, it was made for bats and it can be used on mermaids. Used on anything in the game that only has one response. Sadly, um, the Lafanian linebackers are immune to it. Yes. Yes, speaking of the bats, it was Earth that very much incentivized the creation of the, the MPC Guild. Oh, and uh -oh. Iker did the same thing! Thankfully, I, he had Iker already swiped, and that was his first chest on that floor, so it's a quick run back, and he can avoid it. Yeah. Fred looked to have, yeah, nine shards already, which is a really good start on the uh, 28 net 
you know, jacks up the experience too a little bit. Especially getting this, Ooh, and that's the crown. crown. That's another turn in, and that'll also take him to Northwest Castle. I do not believe he checked those three chests that Ikor did. That'll get him a good shield and some more money. Yep. Exit out. Save has some houses he got there, so he doesn't have to worry about going to the inn and go right back in to take the or the Kraken side. Do you think he will get enough experience to try fighting Kraken? Or do you think he's just going to dive down, get as far as he can, and then exit out? I don't know if he'll make it to Kraken. Um, I imagine that if he makes it to Kraken, he will try Kraken. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to go walk behind, so maybe... Maybe so. Yeah, as long as he doesn't crack 15, he doesn't cut down into the growth rate of his uh, promoted magic casters for the... or magic casts for the knight and the ninja. Meanwhile, Ikor ended up picking up the opal bonk in Earth 2, actually is using that uh, equip helm and equip gauntlet blursing on the black mage to give the black mage an opal bonk. That is quite creative because I will tell you that when I run these seeds... I don't even parse those blur things because it's just like, okay, fine. Seafood party pack full of lobsters gets the kill on Coughlin. That shows you just how dangerous Sky or Sea can be. Not only is it a late game dungeon with a lot of powerful enemies, it has a lot of powerful enemies that come in large numbers, which make them that much harder to deal with. Yep. Iker definitely making the safer play here of finishing off Earth. Um, we still haven't really... We did find the floater. Um, but I have to imagine that Iker is going to go to sea eventually. And we'll depending get on what... Yeah, really depending on what we find on the Earth Armory floor with Earth's Armory and the Claw and Lich's Closet... If there's something like a canoe down here, yeah, the floater we know is in C, and that's a good place to go, but Iker could easily just fade C and choose to go volcano or ice. He does have access to exits, so those those are good places to go. So, so, sorry, Iker, the defense sword does not count as a legendary sword. It really should, but it doesn't. Well, he really doesn't want to deal with those ogres, because some of those ogres have cremate. Yeah. Or those wolves. We know those wolves are jerks. Yeah, watching them just punch, and Iker's white mage is down here, we don't seem to care. Maybe it's just because we can't do anything about it. But... Chad Burt, you're joining us with a very interesting situation of... One runner got the rod and is doing full earth, the other one took the oxail and went to dive sea and then realized he couldn't handle it and left after doing mermaids. And didn't carbonate bubbles. There's a slab, which could still turn into the tail. And a coral plus five, that is wieldable by the thief. Very, very good weapon, technically much better than that weir sword. Yeah. Take advantage of that extra plus 20 strength that that fighter got early. Very going to be very good if he goes to sea after this, because the coral is going to be effective against all those uh, aquatic entities. And the Excal is behind the crown. And it is plus three, and that legendary sword equipment function for the thief is going to be big stick swing all the way. Yeah, um, that is quite a big stick. Lots of its advantages are front loaded, so it will carry you here. And we found the chime, which is access to a lot more checks. Honestly, if I were Icor. I would consider diving Mirage for those t relatively quick checks, 
plus the packs you find in Mirage, yeah, they're even higher level potentially than in C, but they are in lower party numbers. You've got Nuke. You could get a lot more experience, a lot safer, technically, in Mirage. Yep. Plus, you could find the Red Stakes or Blueties. Fred deciding to go and check Marsh Locks. Um, we know that you can have a shard, but not really. I went ahead and put the blursings in chat for any of our any of our viewers who missed them earlier. Most relevant is the fighter's plus twenty strength, plus twenty five agility, the thief's elemental magic, and legendary sword capabilities. The red mage with cure three, protection from lightning, poison, and earth. And the White Mage, Heal Magic and Hurt Undead. Black Mage, Hurts Dragons, plus a Gauntlet and Helmet Equipment. Yep, which, as uh, Fabian Hawk here pointed out, um, I believe Iker is taking advantage of on his Black Mage as we speak. It's handy to have hands that are guarded from damage, especially when you need those hands to cast things. Like Nuke. That is plus one steel armor. I would probably look at buying that if you didn't already have some fire armor to put on that knight or that fighter for now. Yeah, steel's feels all right. I don't know if we're at that kind of stage where I, I'd rather buy houses, I guess, for the equivalent cash. Fair enough. And Icor is heading south towards sea. He will be able to res his white mage up in on rack before diving. This is gonna work out relatively well for him, but really just comes down to if he now has the power to make it or will have the power to make it down Kraken's side and survive. Mef Coughlin, meanwhile, has taken care of Marshlock and Northwest Castle, got his Excal. He's happy there, but he now has to choose does he go to Crescent? Does he go anywhere else? I mean, Crescent pretty much is his only option, I'd say. Really realistic option for this. Damn point. You could go. Oh, you can't make a deal stuff to do, can you? So... Yeah, he would have to go to like the desert and grind early, but that would be a poor choice. So yeah, Crescent yeah. is his only route, and he will be happy to find progression. Less so happy to find it's the rod. And more poison. Yeah, it might drive him all the way down Earth, which isn't it was isn't a bad thing as we know. I could have made it through pretty pretty readily there. And Iker gonna take a stab here at um, C. Cheap Pro Ring, 7,400 for a Pro Ring plus one in Crescent. We did not see that from Ikor. He did not have the money, so we didn't bother checking. But that is instant death magic and immunity, or resistance, I should say. Yeah, not, not quite as good as a Ribbon, but definitely up there. Definitely worth getting on everybody as fast as you can. Saw a quick check of white and black magic at level 6, gets the rod from the sages, but that was um, a mute harm 3, cure 2, and harm 4 for white, and then warp, slow 2, lit 3, and rub. That warp is nice to have if you can get it, but uh, probably could live without the white magic if you don't have a white mage. If you have a white mage, that level, that harm 4 is effectively a fade. Well, close to a fade with the harm all flag enabled. Looks like Iker's faring a little bit better with the packs, and I can't tell if it's the packs that he just hasn't seen anything nasty yet, or if it's just that he's just faring that much better, but um, seems to be able to take on at least some of the enemies here in C. And that is an Opal Helmet plus four that is now joining the Opal Bra or Gauntlets on that Black Mage. It is a very kitted out and protected Nuke Caster. Honestly, one thing that's probably helping Icor right now is he does have two casters to send out board wipes. 
Uh, he's very much happy he has a life caster that's still alive to get that thief back up, but either way. Yep, for sure gonna... Life to that one. It's... Iker's gonna get his floater out of this. He will be happy to see that, but at that point, the question is, will progression elsewhere be found in C, or will it end up in Mirage? We have seen some very bouncy back and forth seeds where Oxiol is in Mirage, Canoe is in Sky, and like CC's Gambit in Sky, and yeah. Plenty of variation in the seeds, and we're only in the first week of this tournament. Many yeah. more brackets to go. Yeah, they could definitely turn out a little bit long. Um, but. Back and forth isn't isn't so bad. You get some levels gear exercise. House shard and Iker has 17 shards. That is a lot. If he can get the tail sooner and later, he'll be very happy to be able to take some sort of grind at this point. Yeah. We really we need to find the loot. Um but once we find the loot, that is... They, they could go as soon as they have the shards. There's yeah, no that is other report. very true. So... I don't know if it's going to be well advised, necessarily, but... If you don't care for volcano or ice, not getting the canoe is totally doable with these flags. Yeah. No canoe means no floater, too, which means you don't get the checks for... Uh, for uh, Gaia or Lafane for incentive item turn-ins. That could be, like, not getting a ribbon or not even getting the tail. This could truly be a promotionless seed, making those thieves with the x very, very valuable. Looks like Iker's trying his luck here on Kraken's side. Looks like we're in conserve the... Crushes HP, whatever. And, and spell levels. Mickey Stone calling ordeals for the loot in chat. I wouldn't say that'd be bad to see. I mean, that would mean they got the canoe, though, so. I'm hoping for floater, or for canoe list, tail list. Just see them make do with what gear they have. That would be, uh. That would be interesting. Might be here a while. <laughs> well, with that legendary swinging knight doing one shot to lit with an Excal, basically. Get some levels on him, get some swings, it really makes some damage or some difference, but the armor he'll have is not an option. I'm actually kind of shocked Icor did not take that pack. Multiple whiz mummies and mummies can be a really juicy pack if you've got the magic to deal with them. Yeah. As long as they don't have something nasty, they're, they're, they're a pretty good take. Sea snakes have poison, that's kind of thematically appropriate. Not poison to the spell, just poison damage, but, but still. Just, just poison. Technically, they're not poisonous, they're venomous. F. Coughlin, he already did the dive into C, didn't go the left side of C that Icor is doing on Sharknado floor now, but because he doesn't want to deal with C, he is going to Mirage Tower. Let us see. Do we have a cube in Mirage? Do we have a canoe? Do we have a tail? Well, can't be the tail, sadly, but do we have something that could turn into the tail, like the TNT, the crystal, crystal. or the adamant? Looks or like he's gonna, taking grind checks. We're not, not going to take Aquos, but we'll do a T-Rex. Sure, I'll nuke a T-Rex. Cube and bottle Ooh. in the Sharknado shark room. You get a T-Rex off the second run. And That's it's a fast, short. fast one, too. Yeah. I don't think it's takeable at these levels just yet. 
Oh, it Ooh. totally is. That is actually an incredibly thin blue steak. Yeah, that is that is good. Um, we have twenty eight tents, but we need the we actually need the houses because we need the spell levels. But we can do this for a little bit. I honestly don't mind this because with the shards he has, that's still 10,000 experience across two party members, 6, 000, almost 7,000 across all three. He's reached that 14, 15 level point. He might just go into Mar Nope, he is going to continue the grind, and I don't blame him. Take the grind that you want when you can get it. Yeah, not getting those spell casts on the fighter and the thief with the promotion is not nice, but getting those levels on that thief to get that many more swings, that's worth it. Yeah, and realistically, as long as you can get one level three on the fighter, the knight, so that you can go ahead and get uh, life two, is really what you'd be looking for for those spell levels. I guess there's fast up high, so the ninja can have fast. Well, if F. Coughlin's doing the blue steak dance of joy in the desert, Iker is on Kraken's floor, is going to try and finish off Kraken for another four shards before making his own way to the desert with the cube in hand that he got out of Sharknado floor. It really could be the case that Mirage has no progression in it and F. Coughlin has to read dive C. whole lot of shards coming in. Meanwhile, we see Kraken, we see Invis 2 coming out, we see Fast going out on that fighter with that Coral Sword swinging. 270 damage at 5 hits, more Invis 2 comes out from the White Mage. Defense Sword bruising up on that Thief, more Invis coming out, more swings. Or it's 305, this is a lot of damage, and that defense sword and invis stick are or invis are doing their job to keep that thief out of dan or danger. The more dodges, the less damage is done still. And 92 health, the care four going on it. Cure three, yep, cure four it is. Temper made it onto the fighter, swing from the thief, 31 chip damage. Black Mage takes the punch, but stays alive. Five hits, 950. There goes Kraken. That is four seeds or four shards for Icor and a clean of C. Meanwhile, the root, or the crystal and the TNT coming out of greater than less than. And a katana. That means that Excal or that Excal can immediately go down onto that knight if the promotion occurs with the crit stick on the thief and that. And that leaves the red mage with the option of swinging at something else if they find if they go back and get that massa perhaps. As Ikor makes his way into the desert, F. Coughlin makes his way out. Doesn't have the canoe, so he can't take the cheeky dock at Matoya's, but is taking the northern dock most people forget about to go into the inner sea, passing Provoka. He's got the turn-ins for the crystal and the TNT. He could walk his way to both of those if he chooses to. If this turns out to be the tail, that could be very huge for him. Oh, the ogres with cremate and the toxic, toxic... Or, uh creeps. It's just so nice. What do you think this turn is going to be? Crystal and TNT coming up? Opal bracelet's pretty good. Some of the best armor that you can put on any caster and looks like he's going to throw it on the thief for now. Understandable. Yeah, we want that thief alive swinging our legendary swords. If he doesn't promote, that's basically the best gear he can give it, because uh, without promotion he can't use fire or ice armor. Meanwhile, Iker continuing the process of climbing the Mirage Tower, going on the grid in less than four, about to find two great turnit items, but not going to leave, not going to go turn them in, going to go straight up and try and fetch something out of Sky, because we now know that is where progression lies. Yep, pretty much have to be here. 
Interesting routing situation. F. Coughlin leaves the dock and then goes all the way back around the world rather than trying to go all the way the other direction to get around this peninsula. Ends up overshooting it and have to backtrack anyways, but hey, it's navigation on a map that's flat and yet somehow wraps around on two different planes. Don't think about it. Yeah, it's an infinitely thin world. It would be interesting if they were to remake Final Fantasy 1 with a spherical map and see how they did that. But hey, yeah. that's for the that's for the crazy people to do. Meanwhile, Blue Sta or Blue Dragon, not Blue Stake, at the tile blocking Ooh, Frost. Kind of thematic for a Blue Dragon to have. I mean, if it was a Icy, but still. Gets away from the blue D, and that's a power bonk that's excellent to see. Heck, he could even equip it to a black mage if he had one, but that is definitely going to go on the thief or the fighter at this point. But that does mean the tail is behind either the ch or the loop plate, the at or sorry, behind the slab, the adamant, or the bottle. Two of those are locked behind the canoe, which would get them access to the floater, so... Igor looting, er, looting Sky 1, finds a loose eye, takes the loose eye, finds it doesn't really... It goes down pretty quick, and hey, his levels at 17, 18 are pretty much comparable to F-Coffins at this point, and having dived and finished C, that pretty much puts him ahead on progression, minus those two checks for the Opal Bracelet, and the power bonk. Hmm, liquid metal doing some pretty good damage to Iker's party. I'm shocked he's not trying to heal up. Well, it was just the thief, it seems, so who knows? If the thief dies, he can just life two it up, and that's a full heal either way, but there's another free eye taken. Oh wow, I am just seeing that. That is a ribbon coming out of Sky 1 left side. Ooh. But he is also, Ikor is in shard go mode, so he really does just need to find the loot and he can go. Wow. So that means that his, uh, he'll be getting maximum experience from anything he encounters, too. Yeah, and that's an ice plus one that's better than the fire plus or the fire vanilla that was in Northwest Castle. And interesting, Icor exits out. Where was he? Where would he go at this point? I mean, he has the turn ins. Is he? He's gonna check for grinds as well. We know the top right quadrant has the blue stake. If he finds that, I mean, stake and wings is takeable. Yeah, I4 is likely on the get the security levels or just grind to the end kind of situation. If he can get to 25-ish, I'd say he's safe to go after Tia and then just go straight into, into Toph. Yeah, it looks like Iker's taking a little bit of a grind here outside of Sky now. At least taking this pack, which is not too bad, we know. He does have one more party member, so he's getting less experience per party member having them than F. Coughlin did, but he has full shards, so that really much compensates it. He's getting just shy of 6,000 per or per encounter with the stake and wings for all four of his party members. It was just shy of seven for the three party members for F. Coughlin on those blue Ds. Yeah, it was, uh, it's just down a lot and run from these NPOs. Hopefully. Then we'll get the stake and wings after we leave. Oh, wait, no, we're gonna hard reset. Yep, stake and wings were off the first and possibly second encounter, followed oh, by the okay. RA Cleos. Right. Yeah, the uh, blue stake was on the second encounter in the top right quadrant of the desert. 
on F Coffin Skin. I love that glitch. If you open your menu while standing inside of a door, this happens in the vanilla game too. When you come out of your menu, you get the ghost door two tiles down beneath it. It's it's just a fun little artifact of the engine. Yep. He heals up, and when we get out of there, he will see the door. There it is. It's not as cool as Swag Sword Strats in Zelda, but hey, a few things are as cool as Swag Sword. Or Swag Sword. Yeah, but um, still, still a fun little glitch. F. Coughlin checking box. The last few boxes gonna get his second turn in item. Gets the cube. Gets access to Sky itself. Honestly, at the rate things are going, by the time Iker finishes the grind and thinks he's at levels that actually will get him through Sky, F. Coughlin will probably be right there with him. And at this point, Iker is actually ahead in levels. He just... The thing that F. Coughlin has that Ikor doesn't at this point is the power bonk and that bracelet. Good things to have, but the power bonk really is meant to compensate for lack of levels if you're pl using it this early. Yep, but it is really nice to have. Fred gonna go take his chances up here with Kraken, probably will be just fine. If we get a loot plate bonk on stream, it will be very clippable, but it will be understandable. The moment you realize you're in go mode and just need levels, and you think, I'm gonna do this, you end up facing Ankleos. Or accidentally boot bonk into the loot plate for getting the loots there, especially if you, like, saw the loot and then reset out of it at some point, thinking you'd go back and get it. Definitely have seen that happen. Meanwhile, as I vamped with the chat, that is a dead Kraken. That's four shards down, another orb lit for F. Coughlin. He still needs more shards to be in full go mode. Icor trying and failing to use the top of the Matoya's River Dock to try and get the turn in. Gonna leave and go and get those checks before he tries to redive or yeah, redive Sky. On his weird and wonderful circuitous route around the inner continent, as F. Coughlin is about to dock at the desert. Interesting, Icor didn't save after leaving the desert, so he just reset back, is just gonna give up on getting those checks and go dive Earth or Sky all the way. Meanwhile, F. Coughlin has gotten back on the grind, is going after Blue D or Blue D's and doing a lot of damage with that Excal for sure. These runners have been trading places. One grinds the desert while others do other things. The other one grinds the desert while other does other things. At this point, it's putting Icor in the lead with the de with the dungeon exploration and the shard count. Grinding done. F. Coughlin into Mirage on his way to the cube floor. Now, question, where do you think progression will be here? I mean, it's gotta be in Sky, right? It, it definitely does, and it has to be either 
Well, honestly, it would have to be the canoe, if not the loot. I think it and has to be In fact, the canoe the... would have to be here as well, if the loot right. is here. Right. The canoe... Has, has got to... I'm gonna go with it's in Stacey's Gambit, just like it was the other night with Blue, or with that Ozlato C that I was subjected to. So far, we're not seeing the massive bouncy bouncy in comparison to even that seed, so our runners could possibly in tow for 10 minutes or so, I could hope. There's the adamant. That's another check, and that could again be the tail that is so elusive. Yep, definitely hang on to that one for the tail possibility, because... If you could, if you could uh, promote, that would be some some pretty strong endgame potential. You upgrade your ability to equip better armor on your characters, which would be extra valuable for F. Coughlin, who is running no dedicated white mage. And there is the loot in the incentive chest in Sky. That's weird. He got the adamant in the chest that didn't have the Adam, and they got the loot in the chest that should have the Adam, and Icor in shard go mode finds our Ankylios and gets away with it, just loses the thief, so. Not really a huge deal during our grind. Now, Icor has a few options. Does he check, you know, he, he's pretty much going to guarantee he needs to check these three items, because if it is the tail, he's got gear that would incentivize him to promote. If it's not the tail, he's going to get, we know, the power bonk. He's going to get a ribbon. He, he's going to be happy. Yeah, I think in, in Iker's position, it depends on whether you think you're ahead or behind. I should say I a think... bracelet, not a ribbon. Yeah. Which is... Um, I think the ahead play is you go to Toph and you just hope it's gentle. It is a Vorpal plus 5. That is actually a very valuable crit stit, but it's promotion lock to anything except for that ninja. He is swapping it out for the katana. I, I wonder if plus 5... Lit, or Vorpal beats the Katana plus one, but me. Yep, we got our power box. I know somewhere, someone in the community, a very well name that I unfortunately can't remember, did create a spreadsheet that can calculate the value of a weapon, plus or minus. I don't have that name off the top of my head, nor the link to that spreadsheet. So we'll just go with uh, the runner knows best, and the board pool is going to be the best for him. Yeah, that plus five is pretty alluring. That's plus four B is pretty good, so we'll just have to see. Well, what we're about to see is him get the X-Cal that rolled up, and then he's going to question everything. Because at this point, we kind of know that the fl uh, that the ribbon and the tail are in Gaia and Lafane, which we also now know the since the loot was in Sky, the canoe is in Sky, which gives access to the floater turn in to get the ship. So this is a no promotion seed unless some or unless one of our runners makes it all the way up to the sky and actually does get the canoe. I approve. Promotion is a crutch. Igor stacked for funds, got his best gear available to him as he could possibly use. If anything, he's going to get some grinding done in Toph. I doubt he's going to go anywhere else to try and fetch anything else. Well, after he gets this bracelet. Yeah. Now, when do you think F. Coughlin's going to stop his grind? Because he sure as heck isn't expecting the tail at this point. He's at level 26, 6, and 5. I don't know. I don't know what he's 
really looking for. He keeps looking at the stats. Maybe there's a there's a break point that he knows. Yeah, probably looking for six hits on the thief. I mean, that thief swinging that many times is gonna do a whole lot of damage. Yeah, 806 on five hits. On that x -Gal. Yeah, It rolled pretty up. Like, plus three, I think. Yep. I'm actually kind of shocked he is not danning the red mage to try and focus more experience on his two primary melees, but that red mage getting more buffed and be more survival as his solo life caster, that's not unreasonable to see. No. And with 1329, Iker, our first runner, back 2,000 years. Actually, no, he's back in Topher, but not yet in the past. You have to go through the loop pace, or plate, to get back to the past. Using that heal stick, interesting, just to top off chip damage. The, the Zeus Gauntlet not doing much either. He is going for the walking grind. Oh. Well, he has to, because those are unrunnable chimeras. Makes sense that he's using the heal stick and the Zeus Bonk. He's preserving his spell casts. Getting five hits off his thief, doing a good chunk of damage, level 24 across the board. Now a little behind F. Coughlin in levels, but the difference is where he's at versus where F. Coughlin is. He is in go mode already in Topher, F. Coughlin is not. Yep. We haven't seen anything nasty yet on the first couple levels here, which is always always a relief. When Unruinable Chimeras. Yeah, that's take it or leave it, but so far you're right. Very much not- Ooh! Unrunnable Phantom! Just to be a bad eye, extra bad mode. Gross. That is just not very much what you want to see there. But, um... Looks like Phantom probably won't be here very much like this. Zeus Bonk gets Phantom. Can't Second. Hold the giant sword. What do you, what do you, oh, I guess it's probably better than the Coral Sword. Better than the Lark as well, for sure. Well, he really does like having that Coral Sword, because, you know, something that crits Kraken 2 can't be bad. Yeah, yeah. Or is extra effective, I should say, not crit. Right. F. Coughlin, done with his grinding, is actually leaving the desert. I did not check, is he in shard go mode at this point? Yeah, he has, he has all of his shards, so... He that is... makes sense, he went for the grind and is going at this point, then. Hunting around, I believe, for the tail, it looks like. He has the adamant to turn in. He's already turned in the TNT, but he has not turned in the adamant, to my knowledge. So he does not have that Vorpal. That said, he really doesn't seem to care, so he is going to go in. He has the Katana, he has the Excal. Yeah. And yet another unrunnable pack for Iker. That's never really what you like to see. Um, getting that good experience though he's not going to mind it as long as he can not waste too many charges with it that helps balance out the experience value that F. Coffin has going in that said if they're on the same step count they're going to get the same unrunnable packs and that's just going to make F. Coughlin that much stronger That shows you how much F. Coughlin doesn't think he needs the experience. He just passed up on three Gasty, or three Gasties. That's a lot of experience in that one pack. I 
I do believe he is on a different step count because we've seen packs that I don't think Ikor saw there on that on that third floor. Yeah, he must have come in at a different reset point. Very often, it's notable because very very often you will see the same thing over and over again because the runners are getting hard resets before they come in. Fred not having any problems with the Phantom. Interesting that Icord chose to use a fast on that, getting that thief fasted up, but that was five hits for over a thousand damage, and Lich 2 was uh, about as eventful as one would hope. Yep. Um, ooh, unrunnable four pack of fires is just not really what you want to see. I like that they're like, just heal sticking whatever possible. Saves the potions, keeps the party topped up, and saves the cast, which is probably the more important part. It's, it's just interesting seeing Toph have all these unrunnable parties at least one once a floor, it seems. Yeah. It is quite amusing. It's going a long way to help F. Coughlin catch up as long as he's on a different step count and doesn't see nearly as many of them. But hey, here's some Earths. He'll probably see an unrunnable pack at least before he gets to Lich. Meanwhile, Carry 2 has been pulled, continuing with the heal strats. Carry doing 111, not whole much damage, twice that being dealt to him by the fighter. Pretty fast on that thief and the fighter as well. Going to choose to zoo spawn instead of fast. Yeah, 600 around is just gonna get you there. That's, that's great. Oh, and that's... with the fast cast, then you're at 10 hits. That's amazing. That is another insta- or thousand hit damage move- or thousand damage hit from that thief with fast. If the thief survives and gets a fast cast, it's gonna be able to carry at this point. That said, you're past carry too, and you're on to Kraken, which, uh... We know Kraken loves killing white pages, and there's no backup life caster on Iker's party. Doing a bit of shuffling puts the fighter in front, thief in second. Halfs the chance that the thief will be targeted with any sort of punching. Goes with Invis 2, doesn't have the white shirt, so has to do a cast of it. Fast comes out on the thief. Thief gets the swing after the fast. 213, only three hits. That is highly evasive from Kraken. More damage actually coming out from the fighter swinging that, or that coral sword. Again, coral is extra effective against the sea creatures. Kraken is one of them. Temper coming out. Invis 2 coming out. Very much stacking evasion and power on that thief. Another swing. 6 hits 906. That is Kraken 2 down as F. Coughlin beams his, or gets his way to carry it. Hey, carry had Bane. Didn't get the kill on him. But uh, doing more swings and weights. Yeah, that uh, thief in both parties with their legendary weapons is really, really key to uh, the success here. You know, it's amazing. We Tia have... 2 noticing the thief is the problem, went for the hit immediately, put him down to 208. Fast coming out after the swing, 208 without it. Let's see what he can do with the fast there. Interesting that he's going with Morin Bay is not trying to heal up that thief. We do have life on battle enabled, but I don't think any of our runners got life level one, so that will not help. Right. That is the little known fact that life is the only one that works in battle. Life 2 does not. Um, well, it didn't matter because the one that lost their life was Tia 2, and Icor has made it cleanly to crack or er, to Chaos's floor as F. Kaufman is on on carry or Kraken 2 very very close coming up if cra if chaos roll thick or extra evasive or just has nuke and nuclear stacked on him this really could be that tight of a run Wings out with the knight, goes ahead and invises with the white mage. Power bonk is on that thief, gonna power it up, gets the fast cast that's extra strong. Going with the swings and swings, gonna go ahead and just try and get damage in now. Last temper cast, it's gonna be a temper cast and a saber bonk used. Let's see if that's enough. Actually switch to the Vorpal, 688 damage. 
knowing that that Excal's elemental damage bonuses do not work on Chaos, he's going with the critest of crit sticks he has, a Vorpal plus five, switching to nuke strats with the Black Mage out of those temper charges, heal three instead of a heal stick, doing much more work trying to keep his party up. Only 84 damage off the knight, but the nuke comes in for 191. Not the highest roll, but more than enough damage to really make it. Out of charges of spells, looks like he's going to go with the heal stick instead of heal three, but nuke rolls high. Rub coming in, taking out that knight. That is the ablative meat shield of the party, and it works. 12.58 on the clock there. That is GG for Iker. Yep, that is GG for Iker, and we're um, just about to see Fred go through the Chaos Fight 2 here. Just made it through Kraken 2. Um, it's a very, very close race here. Let's see. I'll go ahead and try. I can calm this if you like, if you want to try and you know, get Icor in for comms or for interviews. We see Invis coming out for evasion, we see Swing, we see more Power Bonk trying to get that nin or that Thief stronked up, Invis 2 coming out. So far, Punches doing their thing, the Defense Sword getting used for Ruse stacks to keep extra evasion, going with Potion Strats instead of Swings on that Fighter, now it's been Roost up. There's the Fast Cast, the Fighter doing its job of being the bait for Punches. More power box. When that swing comes out from that ninja, it should be strong. Getting temper casts on it, that is extra buffed. Is using the katana, 820 hits. The rub did not hit the the fighter for F. Coughlin as it did for Ikor. Another swing, 10 hits, 11, 14. This is not a chaos that is uh, long for this world. Stunned on the black maid or the knight, and there you go. GG's in chat for F. Coughlin with a race time GG time of 1.14.25. Less than two minutes behind our winner on stream who joins us, Iker GG. Thank you, Fabian Hawk. GG. Yeah, GG to F. Coughlin too. A good race. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a really close one. You like close ones? They're good for the viewers. <laughs> I mean, they're good for the viewers. I do say it was quite interesting, the divergence you guys had in routes. Both of you ended up doing a grind in the desert. Uh, you got the stake and wings. F. Coughlin found that top northwestern quadrant was a blue stake. So mm. I found the one lower right on my site. I'm, I'm clicking with it. I know where it is. I'm here. Close to the ship. It worked for you in the end. No floater, no canoe. Just had to make do without promotion. But man, did that legendary stick swinging thief do it for you. I don't know if you noticed, like at the very beginning, I was on two thieves, black, white, and then I got cold feet. I'm like, uh, what if I don't get any legendary stuff? I, I better switch to a thief fighter just in case. And <laughs> I wish I kept the two thieves. I mean, the fighter was good to be shield at the end. Um, just being, being the tank. That's what he does. Um, we'll keep the thief alive. But man, I wish I had the, the thief with the, uh, the uh, Excalibur and a thief with the Orpal. Yeah, that Vorpal rolling way up makes it a really, really, really great sword, um, especially against Chaos. Yeah, that's why I went looking for things, because like, I just have the Katana, I only I think I really roll plus one, and uh, I really wanted the Excal or the or the Vorpal, and I think I have both of them, one at um, Dwarf and one up at um, Matoya. A Vorpal that rolled plus five. Yeah, I was happy yep. to see that. I think the Excal was even like plus four. So, yeah, just uh, the plan was keep the Excal on and, and make sure things stayed up. Although, I, I really thought I blew it when I left um, the tower without the loot and made it almost to Topher and realized, oh, shoot, I need the loot still. Oh, is, is that what happened? Okay. That's what happened there. I, I thought I was in go mode because I'm like, I just need, need these. I just go kill Tia and go, and I just found like three shards on the right side. I'm like, oh, I'm like one away. So, they get one, I'm leaving. Good job. Forgetting loot because loot, yeah, I usually have it by then in my practice ones. Good job remembering his Chad Bird and Chad. I got to call him out with saying, I'm looking forward to a loot bonk. <laughs> it almost had it, 
I, I probably would have realized it when I went looking for the because uh, I still was going to stop by the um, um, the dwarves and Matoya and even hit up the crown see if I could get uh, the tail and the and the items, but no, no tail would be seen. But yeah, I remembered. Uh, if I had saved out there and had to walk all the way back, eh, this might have turned out differently. With that uh, minute and a half difference, it's quite a ways for the sail. Fortunately, it was just right like the next floor after I went out. We didn't have to go canoe and hunt for it in all the places that canoe would lead us. Well, you, how much did you like the Unrunnables in, in Toph, or did, did you find them just to be too annoying? Yeah, they were slightly annoying. I was trying to conserve resources because I, I knew I didn't have a lot of spells. Like, level 4 and 5 and onward were not that good. And obviously couldn't get to um, the 7s except for in um, the, the what was it, Onrak. Yep. And I don't even think I checked the sixes. I just went for the items and reset out, so I didn't even know it was that six. Something good. You had warp and lit three as well as harm three and four, but you had the nuke, you had the fade, you were fairly damaging. Yeah, we had everything I wanted except for life one, so no no life being in combat for me. Uh but Level otherwise seven I mean, everything Gaia. Who, uh, so we weren't getting that unless we found yeah found canoe, which we didn't need. I was telling you a compliment. I think this is my first canoe list seed I've done of these. I've done probably about two dozen. I have floater lists, but I haven't had canoe lists. Yeah, we don't actually know where it ended up. Fred didn't. I, I know you guys are talking after the race, but Fred didn't find it either. So... We're going to Sky 3, because uh, I don't think either of us made it up there. Once we got yeah. our shards and our our um, loot, then it was just go. Yeah, as soon as, as, soon as each of you found the loot, it was just kind of... At that point, you pretty Time much have to go. to go. You have yep. to go. You have to assume that your opponent also went and to go search for a canoe and go wherever the canoe is going to lead you. Maybe check the bottle. I think bottle and um, the uh, Lafayne turn in would have been the only things that would have been worth it there. But as a uh, lot of annoying unrunnables here. Yeah. Yeah, the, the early game Unrunnables were not very nice to either of you, really, but just in general, not a very nice thing. I'm just happy for a nice Toper. There were no nukes, no thunders, no swirls, nothing nothing bad that I saw. I it was they actually were. kind of kind to you guys, and I, and I the fast on the Thief doing a thousand damage definitely help chew through the fiends before they can do anything really deadly. Yeah, that's my reason. I'm looking for those. Got to get the damage out. But yeah, it's a fun seed. Enjoy well, it. Yeah. Hope enjoy looking, it. looking forward to uh, your upper bracket match, because you're up against Edgeworth next. The uh, three seed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he's going to destroy me. Um, it's... I haven't been anywhere near them in practices, so we'll see, but I don't have high hopes for that one. Well, that's the beauty of an, of a two, or of an upper and lower bracket. If you go down, you still get to continue playing. And if you get done yep. playing, you can join us in the booth and talk about other people playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more of a tracker myself. Uh, <laughs> the knowledgeable people about the game talk. So, join you in the tracking, but... Uh, yeah, let's uh, see what my next match brings. Go from there. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you for the great race. Everybody follow Iker and follow for a Coughlin too, if you know. Um, you know, really big pillar of the NES community, especially the itemizers. Um, and yeah, we, have been playing forever. We just gonna be a close one, so I'm, I'm glad it was. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Soft Dumb and Davy Hawk, for the commentary. Stars for the tracking. It's be gaming for the restream. Well, how about we just go ahead and jump to the final thoughts? Uh, Iker, what do you got for us? I don't know, going to be a tough one. Um, I'm glad I pulled through. I think this might be my first solo tournament victory ever. <laughs> um, Steve was fun. Uh, I guess I just went to the right places at the right times. Uh, I guess he went to um, Sea Shrine and died a few times. Otherwise, it could have turned out differently if you followed my route. At this point, the key held nothing, because that's why I left. 
the key. Usually if I get the key, it's like, let's just go get all the key things. And it was empty. So, anyways, uh, it was a good seat. Yeah, thanks for the restream again. Hope everyone enjoyed it. Sopham, any words? Um, just uh, stay tuned to the Discord for um, updates on upcoming races. Um, there are race announcements and uh, lots of fun races coming up, so um, watch out for those fun races. And thank you for Starser for tracking. Um, thank you for Two Speed Gaming for having us, and thank you for my co-commentator Thamian Hawk for putting up with my uh, interesting aside. So, they... well, th thank you very much, Softnum. As ever, having a good co-commentator makes for things a lot easier. We almost had a one solo Softnum because of some issues in the background. Uh, you're wondering why we we're a bit frazzled at the start, but uh, thank you, Scarser, very much for tracking Icor. Good game, man. Good luck in the upper brackets. F. Coughlin obviously is not out of it. He has a lower bracket match coming up. And as, Scar as Sofna mentioned, feel free to check out the Discord. You will find that information on the Final Fantasy Randomizer website along with the Randomizer itself. Uh, moreover, if you join the community after this tournament ends, we will be starting back up the Duckling, or the Duckling program where new people can join the community, join with experienced runners, learn the randomizer, do different seeds, get some experience leading into the Duckling Derby, a specifically for the noobs tournament just to show off and learn and have fun. That is coming up after the winter tournament ends itself. For myself, for Softnum, for Scarcer, Icor, and F. Goblin, thank you, Speed Gaming 4, for hosting us. Thank you to all of you for watching this race. Have a good evening.